Intel seemingly moved its KB Lake X and Skylake X CPU launches up, possibly because of Ryzen. And with those launches comes a new CPU at the top end, an 18 core, 36 thread chip, the 7980XE. We'll be talking about that today, along with a total of eight other enthusiast desktop CPUs that have been detailed so far. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by Corsair and their new T1 race chair, which is a bucket seat style gaming chair. The chair is equipped with rollerblade wheels and it's priced at $350. You can learn more at the link in the description below. Starting us off with Intel's marketing materials because that's all we really have right now for these CPUs. Their marketing advertises the new X series of CPUs, KB Lake X and Skylake X, as ready for extreme mega tasking which is presumably a step down from giga tasking and a step up from kilotasking or something like that uh, they've also said that it's ready for advanced gaming which is presumably different from gaming and vr readiness now, vr of course is still a major buzzword and it is often attached to high-end products so not a surprise there however we did test the Intel 7700K, so their own product, 7700K, 300 something dollar CPU, and an R7 1700, both were effectively perfect for VR. There was no distinguishable difference between them in gaming. We have a whole video on it that's pretty long and goes in depth. So $2,000 CPU, probably not necessary for VR, but we'll go through all the stuff anyway. The new CPU scale from 240-ish to about $2,000. So that's down from the four thread line up to the 36 thread line, the 18 core 36 thread monster. Uh, at the low end, it's still an i5 and an i7 from the KB Lake line. They are KB Lake X with a new socket, LGA 2066. And those CPUs are basically a refresh over the 7600K and 7700K, slightly different clock, things like that. The 7640X and 7740X are the KB Lake X CPUs with the rest falling in the Skylake family of architectures. All of these CPUs socket into the new LGA 2066 socket of X299 boards, which hosts 30 HSIO lanes, maximally supporting 24 PCIe Gen 3 lanes. Note, of course, that the chipset support of PCIe is not beneficial for graphics configurations outside of X4 setups. An SLI demands X8 minimally and pulls its lanes from the CPU instead of the chipset. Regardless, this move coincides with what we saw on KB Lake as for the CPU PCIe lanes. We move from 16 on KB Lake X parts to 28 lane and 44 lane options on Skylake X. The CPUs to watch for this lineup will be the 7800X, which is going to compete the most directly with the Ryzen R7 line in price and target use cases. So that would be the one to watch out for. The next one is the 7960X, and this one's a bit more expensive, but it will compete probably with where we expect AMD's Threadripper to land in terms of price and performance target. It is more of the high-end desktop area. The least interesting of these CPUs so far would be the KB Lake refreshes, like the 7740X, which is going to be basically a 100 megahertz boost to the base clock, and that's really about it, other than a new socket type. Uh, so that's what we're looking at right now. In terms of the i9 CPU, just this is kind of a side note to bring up, in our original i9 news video, when we talked about the i9 rumors of CPUs, there were a couple comments that I thought deserved addressing, and those were the ones that said, look, this is what competition looks like. AMD has pressured Intel into finally creating a new line of CPUs, the i9 CPUs. And while there is competition that is pressuring Intel, and that is certainly a good thing, this is not the result of it, because these CPUs have existed for quite some time. It's not like Ryzen came out and Intel just started pumping out silicon of a new CPU. No, they have branded new CPUs as i9. That's what's new. They've branded something that the silicon uh, already existed for, and they've been developing for quite a while. CPUs take something like 18 months start to finish. They spend the last six months of their life in uh, testing, validation, and uh, silicon fabrication. So these are things that have existed for a while, but their launch date seems to have been moved up. And then we have the new i9 branding, which is, of course, noteworthy and probably somewhat of a response to Threadripper and Ryzen. With a spotlight on these CPUs, there's still a lot undocumented. We don't yet know clocks, for instance, though we know core count is up there. It'll come down to how high Intel can clock these higher-end CPUs that are at the very top end of the list. We know the clocks for the bottom end. 
And outside of clocks and cores, there have also been changes to the caching system. We don't yet have full details, but we can get into the basics. From the very limited information we have, it seems as if Intel is reducing its last level cache in favor of larger L1 and L2 caches, which theoretically reduces cache misses and probes into L3. This should assist in latency overall, which is further aided by increasing the private cache sizes to one megabyte per core, but beyond this, we can only really speculate. Intel makes it a big point to highlight the range of uses for the new X-Series CPUs, suggesting that KB Lake K-Series CPUs are needed for 4K or VR gaming, leaving the non-K-SKU CPUs marked as unsupporting of 4K or VR. This is an interesting marketing slide, seeing as we've benchmarked non-K CPUs in both VR and 4K and have found them perfectly adequate. What's more interesting is that Oculus and HTC both specify CPUs as low as i3s and i5s as being VR ready, something we've also tested and agree with. So it's interesting that Intel is attempting to sacrifice its own line here, saying that the k SKU i7 CPUs are needed for VR, considering that it is plainly untrue. So as if to find a reason for these higher end CPUs to exist in a gaming machine, where we've kind of already set the bar saying that the 7700K is really the top end of what you need when we did our 1800X review, subsequent 1700 reviews, to find a reason for them to exist in gaming machines, Intel has said that you should buy them for 12K gaming, which as we all know is a very common use case. So they're pointing out 12K, a triple 4K screen gaming as the primary target use case of something like the $2,000 CPU and those high-end devices and things that you would need above the k SKU of i7s 4 when you're playing games. Uh, that's kind of what they're looking at, just to give you an idea of where Intel's setting their own bar for gaming performance with these CPUs. They are also, uh, well, really, to, to kind of explain their point here, the only reason that makes sense is not because of the CPU's performance itself. That's kind of irrelevant. What matters is the lane count and assignment. So they're saying with 28 to 44 lanes, you can do more video cards. That is absolutely true. And yes, you would have more bandwidth for them. However, both AMD and NVIDIA have been kind of dialing back support and marketing behind multi-GPU setups, especially NVIDIA. So where Intel is mentioning triple or quad GPU setups as something that is readily supported on these new X-Series CPUs, the fact of the matter is that even NVIDIA does not really commit to three or four way SLI anymore. In fact, you have, or at least at one point, had to get a special key to unlock anything beyond two way SLI. And we all know how SLI scaling works in games anyway. So uh, kind of a, a very narrow use case for these CPUs, but one we'll try to look at. What they make more sense for is production. And Intel does advertise that as well. But just like AMD did with the 1800X, we have to call out when a company marks a CPU as being gaming targeted and it doesn't need to actually be used for a gaming machine because you could either get better performance overall or better price to performance with a lower end CPU even from Intel itself. So uh, they are kind of fighting their own reputation here in the gaming market but in production it'll be a different story. And to go through a few more specs, the cheapest 44 lane CPU on offer is the i9-7900X, which runs a 3.3 to 4.5 gigahertz clock, depending on turbo state, with the most common gaming frequency sitting nearer to 4.3 gigahertz. The 7900X is a 10 core 20 thread CPU with 44 PCIe Gen 3 lanes and a $1,000 price tag. So some of these prices overall are certainly better than Intel's previous X line. That's a good thing. What we would have really liked to see though is for Intel to double down where they're good right now, which would be the 7700K, which is really still the best for gaming, and then try and compete more where they're losing ground rapidly. That would be in the i5 territory where we've already said in our R5 review of the 1600X that it really makes a whole lot more sense to buy something like a 1600 for i5 level gaming these days. It's just better value right now and it's really not that far behind. The i7 is a different story. Its extra four threads do help in the games where the i5 falls behind, and so it does well where AMD struggles a bit more. Where we really need to see Intel compete, though, is that i5 market. There's nothing here for you in that market right now other than a KB Lake X refresh of the 7600K, and that's not gonna do them a whole lot of favors. Uh, and then doubling down on i7s in the enthusiast's 300-ish dollar price point, rather than going really hard on the HEDT stuff. That said, they'll probably be uh, high performers in HEDT, but they're also high cost, $1,000 to $2,000. So that's what we're looking at for today. There will be some 
uh, pre-included CLC solutions with some of these things that we'll talk about more in the future as we learn more from Asetech, who is the supplier of those CLCs that ship stock with the higher end devices. But we don't know a whole lot about them now other than the name is TS13X and it's a 120 millimeter solution. That's about it. So that's all for this Intel news item. As always, subscribe for more because we'll be at Computex all week. We're here in Taipei now. And you can find all of our trade show coverage on the channel, on the website, gamersnexus.net, for the articles as they come out, or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.